Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. It's so exciting to be here. Are you okay, dude? No, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this, of course, is the show where we demystify technology and we take it a little bit too far sometimes. We get too excited about the technology, but today it's well merited. Today we're going to be looking at the comparison between SSD, solid state drives, and mechanical drives, or Oh, is it, I guess, a magnetic optical, not magnetic, what is the? No, not magnetic, needle no. optical, that's a different technology, but magnetic. magnetic but the magnetic, yeah. right? Yeah. Sort of the, the standard hard drive with yeah. the platters and the heads and that sort of thing. Yeah. So we're going to look at the two because, of course, you know, you're seeing a lot of computers these days come out, you know, the MacBook Air, you know, all kinds of uh, netbooks come out with the, the solid state drives. Mm -hmm. People are like, well, why would I pay more for that and not go with the larger capacity mechanical drives? I might have some answers for you. You then. might have some answers. In fact, we will both have some answers today. Good. I'm going to actually kind of differentiate between what's, what they look like inside and what they are and then talk to you about the pros and the cons. Um, because you're going to be up against this when you buy a device uh, this year, whether it's a tablet or a netbook or a laptop, you're going to have these choices. So yes. we want to bring that to you to demystify it. That's what we're all about, you know, here at Lab Rats. All right. Yes, sir. So there you go. So today, mechanical hard drives versus SEC drives. Today on Lab Rats. Welcome back to Lab Rats. Uh, so before we get started, I want to talk to you a little bit about Hover.com. Now, you may have heard me talk about this before. We, we very often will we'll talk about Hover.com as our key sponsor here on the show. And uh, we urge you to zip on over to, to these guys. If you've heard about us before and you're like, nah, Hover.com, I don't need that. But, you know, think about actually taking the recommendation and zipping on over there, uh, check out their domains. They have lots of dot .coms, dot .tvs, dot, dot .everything, pretty much. Dot a lot. Dot a lot. <laughs> and, Ooh, uh, that can be our new uh, tagline. Could be, yeah. Dot, dot a lot. Com, dot a lot. I'm sure someone's got that already, though. Maybe. But anyway, so we, we, are, we are customers. We love these guys. They're really good. If you're in the market for a domain or personalized email, check them out. They're great. They're really great. So we're going to give you this little coupon code here. Uh, if you haven't used it before, if you have used it before and you want to use it again, uh, go grab it. Get 10% off on all of their services there. Use okay. it as much as you like. That's right, exactly. All right, so let's get started with the show. Yes. Now, so we're going to talk about mechanical hard drives versus SSD drives. So yes. do you want to differentiate between one and the other first? Is that a good place yeah, to start? I, I think it's really important to do this because, uh, as we talked about on the show, the, a lot of the world is going mobile. Yes. Uh, mobility is really forcing the hand of how we store things. So yes. uh, traditionally, we've used mechanical drives. Yeah. And uh, we have an old school uh, mechanical drive here for the uh, for a notebook here. This is just a little device. It's a metal box mm -hmm. and uh, has an interface to connect to the computer. Yeah. And, and the key thing about this one is we've actually got the top to come off. And right. uh, you can see inside it's got a little platter around here. It's a yeah. mechanical platter. It's, it's like uh, a little old school record player. Yeah, it's like an old school record player. It's uh, got uh, several different layers here. You've got uh, information being stored on both sides of this, just like a record. In some cases, you've got a stack of them, uh, different platters. And then we've got this head here, or actually it's right over here, that uh, zips back and forth and uh, reads the data all over the platter. So this spins and this moves back and forth to actually get the data no matter uh, where it happens to be on the platter on either side. So this is the kind of hard drive that's been in your, your desktop computer, it's been in your laptop computer, and I guess you're seeing in, in some netbooks as well. Right, yeah, this is very much the old school traditional style, the one that we've lived with for right. years and years and years. And capacity up to a terabyte or so? Yeah, on this uh, size, a terabyte is uh, probably the biggest one you'll see. For the most part, it's going a bit higher than that in the future yeah. uh, as well. I think you can probably get at 1.5 or 2 by the time you're seeing this maybe, who right. knows. Right, 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 okay, good. All right, very good. So that's so, old school. So that's that. So we've got a motor uh, spinning things inside, and uh, just like a record player, it's got to find the data on there. So right. okay, good. So it's very, very, very um, is it mechanical, I guess, the key it's word. It's mechanical. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, so we've got another one here, and I'm going to, uh, we've got something here. You notice it's exactly the same size here. It is uh, solid state drive, so you might be saying, okay, what's the big difference in here? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up the top of this as well. Now, I should make a note here that when by the time you open up one of these old school mechanical uh, drives here, mm -hmm. they're dead. Mm -hmm. You can't use them anymore. Right, you, they're actually, they're vacuum sealed, right? They're vacuum sealed and if you put uh, some information on there, or sorry, if you if you open it up and get dust in there, it's basically toast. You okay. can't use it anymore. Okay. Um, you can send it away to a, uh, a lab to get the information back, but that's thousands of dollars. So right here we've got the inside of our SSD drive. And you'll notice it's all 
chips so on the inside. Key. So we've got uh, basically flash memory inside this. Mm, so if right. you're familiar with the old school USB drive like this, everyone has one of these these yeah. days. It's just uh, data. And we, we talked about how uh, flash memory works before. It's just yeah. data that you electrically spin between a one and a zero state. So it uh, open and close gates and things like yeah, that. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So. This basically puts a whole pile of those uh, flash memory cells together. In this case, we've got 128 gigs on these little chips in here. And uh, they've strung them together and put them in the interface like mm -hmm. this to resemble a drive. So it's the same sort of form factor that you can replace your drive out with. Very cool. But it is pretty much exactly like your flash memory key. So no moving parts. No moving parts. Just like a USB key and uh, it's flash memory. Right. Good, okay, awesome. All right, so let's talk about then, because clearly there's some advantages here, mm -hmm. right? So from a power consumption perspective, my guess is that the SSD drives, or the SSD drive, the SSD, doesn't use as much power because it's not mechanically mo manipulating things inside. Right, so you think about, uh, think about this drive uh, for a second. You've got a motor in here that's constantly spinning it around and moving this, this head back and forth, mm -hmm. and uh, that's going to use up some power. Like, if you think it's got to keep spinning, you can't, power it down between uh, you accessing data, otherwise it's going to take a long time to spin up. These things spin at 5400 cycles per second yeah. or 7200 uh, per second, it's which fast. means it's going really fast. Yeah. And of course, once you get it up to that speed, it takes less power to keep it at that speed, yeah. but it's still a lot of power just keeping it moving. Sure. Okay, good. Um, and so lots of power consumption there. So the advantage of the SSD then it right. clearly is there's no moving parts. No moving parts. So it just looks for the data in the chip and that's done. And there's no heat, I guess, as well. Yeah, there's less heat uh, generated by that. So it, uh, again, when you move things around, you create friction and it generates heat. And uh, that's not the case in here because there's no moving parts. There's less heat being generated. I got it. Okay, good. Let's talk about capacity then. That's probably the next most logical thing. I think that most people know that if they go and they try to buy a laptop these days with an SSD in it, the, it's much smaller than your traditional mechanical drive. Yeah, often it is, yeah. So, uh, or the price is higher. Or the price is higher. And these are sort of two related uh, things in this whole thing. So mechanical does have one real key advantage. It's cheap and has high capacity uh, for that. So yeah. we're looking at, say, maybe a 500 gigabyte uh, drive in mechanical. Yeah. We're looking at about $100. Uh, if you're looking at that same thing in, in terms of SSD, you're probably looking at $1,000. Okay? So 10 times. So price. 10 times, which is wow. pretty much why you're looking at when you're getting a device with an SSD drive, and it's probably going to have a much smaller uh, capacity drive inside. Right. And this is why we're seeing a MacBook Air uh, with the SSDs in it. Probably you're going to get the 64 gigabyte one or the 128 gigabyte. Mm -hmm. If you think about the notebooks that you've bought over the years and uh, the ones that you bought recently, and you think about a 128 gigabyte drive, you're probably saying, that's pitiful. It's going back five or 10 years. It's going back five right. or 10 years. That's I want to, I want a one terabyte drive on that thing so yeah. I can store all my data because a yeah, lot of yeah. people are moving their entire lives to their notebooks, right? Yeah, sure, of course, of course. And so that's, uh, so that's there's a, a real huge problem. Disparity here. Now, do you think that that's going to be change over time? Uh, I think it will change over time. I, I think there's no um, no alternative then for it to change over time. Flash memory is coming down all the time. Yeah. In price, I mean, 128 gigabyte here is about $500. I think uh, we're looking uh, at and. Back in the day, that would have cost you something like three thousand. Right. Yeah. Now we we've seen like a two terabyte uh, or sorry one point five terabyte SSD drive, and that's currently sitting about three thousand thirty five hundred. Yeah. That'll come down. Sure. It's it's got to come down. It's the way well, technology. If you works. go back to your USB keys, I remember okay. buying a USB key. You know, five twelve kilo, kilobytes, where mm -hmm. you know cost you fifty bucks, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you can get a gig for fifty bucks, mm -hmm. and now you can get two or four or six or eight gigs for fifty bucks. So. Yeah. You know, it's taking a while for the whole thing to come down in price and the economies of scale to kick in. But I think that, you know, obviously the price is going to drop drastically. At some point, the mechanical drives are going to become, uh, you know, uh, obsolete, yeah. I would imagine. And for another key reason as well, and that's one thing we didn't talk about yet, is size, like actual physical size of the devices themselves. So we've got these two things right here again. You've got the uh, mechanical drive and you've got the SSD drive. And you notice the difference in, in size here. Uh, in, in the sorry, in the SSD drive here, it's all mostly empty space here mm -hmm. uh, because it's all on the chips, and you can fit a lot of data in a very small space because it's all chips, and you don't have to build in a motor, you don't have to build in the spindle, you don't have to build in a lot of stuff like we have in the uh, mechanical drive that's just necessary for it to function as designed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the SSD is often in the same size like this one right here, just to fit into the space left behind by a mechanical drive in your notebook. Interesting, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you think about it, one of the things they did when they uh, built up the uh, SSD uh, drive in, 
in the new MacBook Air is they change it over to a module. And I'll show you that after the break, actually, the, the size of that thing. Um, you can have like really high capacity things in just a little stick format that looks a little different than a stick of RAM. Yeah. And uh, the, the reason that uh, you'll want to go to SSD, especially when the price comes down, is because it'll allow you to build smaller and smaller devices. So you've got your iPhone, you've got your sure. other mobile devices that use basically an SSD drive, and it's all flash memory. And they're much, much smaller. If you're trying to imagine putting, putting something like this into your iPhone. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah, it is impossible, right. So and it would kill the battery, too. It would kill the battery. Yeah. So SSD is where everything is going, and especially when we're looking at iPads and we're looking at uh, Android tablets and now the new HP uh, WebOS tablet. These things are going to require bigger and bigger SSD drives in order to stay relevant, and that'll drive the price down. What about actual speed of data, like data access speed? The data access speed uh, on this uh, flash is actually a much faster in terms of burst mode. So when you go for little bits of data here and there, uh, it uh, can get to it a lot quicker because when you're looking at something mechanical, again, look at the mechanical model here and it's spinning around. So say you have a bit of data here and then you've got a bit of data over here and then something on the other side. Well, this platter has to keep spinning around for the head to get to it and it adds something called latency. So it, there's a lot of waiting as the drive spins around into the right place. Well, it's seek time, don't they? Uh, there, there's a bit of that, but uh, just getting from one bit of data to the other in a, in a, a long file. So the the the, just the, all the time that adds up on that uh, compared to this where it can just basically go straight to the data. Sure. Uh, it's an it's address a, more than anything else, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, it's you, know, just you know where it lives? Okay, go get it yeah. and just pull it rather than where it lives. Okay, let's travel there. Okay, now we got it. Right, got it. So, so, wait, so what's the practical advice we can give to people out there in Lab, lab Rats land? You know, is now the time to really say, no, I'm going to go to SSD. Do you, do you want to wait? Do you know, what's, the, what's the, the business case for it? Okay, well, the... Mechanical drive uh, for a while has still been better for sustained data. So if you're going to be looking at something that requires huge capacities and sustained data throughput, so for say, for example, say something like video editing or something that requires a lot of streaming, then mechanical may still be your choice because obviously you don't want to get uh, a few terabytes worth of SSD drives at this point because that's going to be really, really expensive. I mean, you can get external drives in this case. We've got uh, we've got this one from uh, from Kingston. It's a 128 gigabyte external, and you know, so this is a bit smaller than your typical external drive because again, it's compacted down, doesn't have all the mechanical parts in that. So you can put those external, but it is still more pricey. So your business case on this is if you need a lot of capacity, then go with, uh, go with mechanical. Yeah. If you need something that's rugged, because I mean, look at this, there's, you're not damaging this, it's all put it's there. It's put off a building, it still yeah. work, right? Yeah, you uh, start hitting this and you're gonna damage the surface of the, uh, of the uh, drive. You lick uh, it. Yeah, you can lick it and you know, you're not gonna be doing that typically speaking, but it, just drop it while it's running. If it happens to be accessing data at the time, well, it could be toast. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's more rugged, it's lighter on your power, it's actually smaller potentially than the, the mechanical drive. So if you really want ultra mobile and you don't need a lot of data, say you're just writing documents or you just have a few things that you wanna bring with you at any time, SSD makes a really compelling case. Right, got it. Perfect, all right, well, there you go. That's, that's your overview from uh, uh, mechanical versus SSD drives. Uh, for your mobile devices. So uh, thank you, Sean. That was really, uh, really great. Please, <laughs> as always. Okay. All right, so let's take a break. When we come back, we've got a picture of the picture of the day, or picture, I should say, clip of the week, and your pictures here on Lab Rats. Well, welcome back to Lab Rats. So uh, before the break, uh, you said that you had a little surprise there. So you want to show us, uh, I guess, the SSD in the Mac MacBook Air, right? I suppose, so right? the SSD module, where uh, the one that comes with it is either 64, or 128 gig. So rather than something like this, which the MacBook Air previously had uh, when it was an SSD-based device, yeah. um, again, this is designed to replace something the size of an old-school hard drive. Right. They decided to cut out all of the packaging around that and just go with something called a module. And this is basically it. It looks like a stick of RAM. It does, yeah. It's great. So it plugs in on the one side. That's your interface to the computer. And then all of your, your data is on either side of this. So this is from Other World Computing. Um, and it uh, is 240 gig right here. Wow. So that's a, a lot of data. Now, it's a bit expensive. It's about $579 for this module to replace it. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually see I, I did uh, the replacement on this in one of the episodes of How Do I? So if you want more information on that, how, how to do that, uh, it's all there. But said, imagine this, 240 gig, you can actually even get to bigger ones coming up soon in, in modules sized like this. And you imagine 
the leap from something like this that requires a huge uh, package design and uh, industrial design of the device that goes around it in order yeah. to accommodate it. So yeah, yeah. very cool. Smaller and smaller devices yeah, all the smaller time. Smaller and faster and more expensive. Yes. Oh, well. It'll right. come down. It, it better. Will. It will. It will. That's the lovely thing about technology. It always gets cheaper. Um, okay, good. So, and you know, we have a clip of the week we want to show you uh, from butterscotch.com. This is uh, an episode of At, which is the show that where we go on location to technology shows and sort of, you know, show off technologies that we find there. Uh, now, this is a piece that you did, mm -hmm. uh, SanDisk, a SanDisk SSD? Yes, yeah, so again, we, we saw a module that they had created, uh, again, for inclusion in things like tablets and phones and all of that. And this one was a 64 gigabyte module about the size of your thumb. But don't, don't listen to me telling you about this now. We can roll the clip and see. All right, let's have a look. Welcome on deck, I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. Now you've got some SSDs here on the table, so we've got this, uh, this old school one that you used to put in This is a full-size SSD, it's uh, great for uh, laptops, but what we have that's designed for things like tablets are our modular SSDs. But now we've come out with something new. And I wanted to show this one. It's called our ISSD, or Integrated wait, wait, SSD. That's, that looks like a stick of black licorice. It does, but it doesn't taste like it. So I wouldn't recommend you trying it. But uh, this is designed for the new types of tablets nowadays that require very small, uh, very small footprint. You can see it's about the size of a postage stamp, and it's very thin because the tablets are very thin in, the, in themselves. If you want to see the entire uh, episode of that at by Sean, uh, zip on over to butterscotch.com. Uh, you can click on Butterscotch TV and go look it up by show there, or just you know do a search for SSD SanDisk in the search bar, and you'll find it. Yes. All right, good. Now, do we have pictures? Because it is picture time. Picture it time. It is picture time, and these are all stored uh, on, uh, or at least were at some point in their life, stored on flash memory. Flash memory, yeah. So, first up, we have uh, from our friend Jack, who's in Hudson, Wisconsin, Love it. Uh, and he is golfing, and in That's the background cool. is dog Chloe. And he really enjoys the show. Good. So there you go. And Jack, uh, as we noted in the previous episode, fulfilled all of the uh, requirements of this. Name. His name. Location. Location. Pet name. And pet name. <laughs> so there we go. Good job. Awesome. Okay. So we have another one from yes. someone who has also done that. Yes. Okay. It's from Andrew in uh, Toronto. Andrew Mark Crispin, yes. Uh, oh, you know him? I kind of know him. I think I, he's, he works for me. Does he? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Well, that explains why he's a little bit familiar. Yes. Um, so Andrew is here with uh, with his dog, Gamma. Gamma. And uh, you've he noticed has ice balls on him. Ice, ice balls on on the dog, and also a uh, coat and uh, booties. <laughs> so he's dressed up his uh, How embarrassing. Up his hat. Is the dog embarrassed? Probably. I, I don't know. Is, does that look like a, like a little Sailor Moon outfit or something? It kind of Like, is, Andrew, yeah. are you getting your dog into cosplay? This is just disturbing. This really. wrong. Stop wrong. it now. Yes. His wife's got some duty with it. Yes. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you, Andrew, for sending that in and for providing the name of everyone in the picture. It's a good man yeah. following the rules. He didn't actually say he was from Toronto, or did he? He may have. He may have. Anyway, so this is, uh, this is Lori, who is uh, in uh, Newark in the UK. Very good. And there's no pets in this picture. There's, there's no pets, but there is a uh, sign that says drug taking is illegal. And it looks like in, in front of that, is that like a, a big weed dispenser or something? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not sure. So anyway, stop. Lori. Whatever it is you're doing, do not take those drugs. That's right, exactly. Drugs are so, bad. So and Lori had a question for us about coding. Lori, the best way to do this probably uh, to get an answer to that question is to go over to ask.butterscotch.com yeah. and ask the question there. Butterscotch.com slash ask. There you go, butter, butterscotch.com slash ask. And if you have a question, you put it there, and then other people will be able to answer it, not just us. Yeah, and if you want us to answer it, then say, please get Andy and or, and or Sean to answer this mm. question as well. Yeah. Of course, there's some things that we're not necessarily specialized in, like Well, coding, we might go, so. we don't know, but how yeah. about we get somebody else to answer Yeah, it. we have some other people on the team that uh, will probably know some of these things better than we do. So yeah. anyways, thanks for asking the question, Laurie. I'm not sure what the answer is at this point. So, What was the question? About uh, how to uh, use a, a visual basic to code properly. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know. We I'll don't admit know. that. So. Don't know, but the people out there at Ask that will know the answer yeah. to this. There you go. Butterscotch.com slash ask. There you go. There you go. Thank you so Good much. Good job. Good job, Sean. Thank you, sir. Up, sir. All right, well, thanks for uh, tuning this week and pushing play. You know, it would be foolish for us to be out here uh, playing with our hard drives. If you weren't out there going, oh, I need something bigger, but I think it's going faster, but it's too expensive. So thanks for tuning in this week. My name is Andy Walker. I'm <laughs> Shankar Rothers. We'll see you next time. Are you ready?
Come on back. I just, I just need to give Matt a clip of me oh, yeah. drinking tea. Okay. I don't know if you ever noticed that there's one of those in every single episode we do in the credits. Is that a thing? Sean drinking. It, it culminated uh, a short while back with one episode where every single clip was me lifting my mug. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. And in five, four, three.